live from San Francisco. It is Yo. the cool kids on Distortion to Static. Stay tuned. Don't change your channel. We're not. We're here right now. You said what's coming up next. I guess not. If we're not coming up next, then, then stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. Whatever we're at, just make sure you watch that. And then don't change it after that. Just keep it there. That's a good. Straight up, man. That's a really good version. We got this. Man, you guys, do you guys have an album out yet? Or are you just strictly internet right now? Uh, we don't have an album out yet. It'll be out in, um, like, beginning of February, late January, around that time. So, yeah. Uh, right now, we're just, we're just pretty much touring and just continuing to try to build build a nice fan base and whatnot and then we'll get ready to drop the drop the disc in like january february like he said for sure that's what's up so right now you guys got the internet going nuts you're doing your thing on myspace and the blogs and everything man i mean shoot if this was like three years ago this wouldn't be possible so you just want to talk a little bit how how you guys are doing your whole push on on the internet uh Honestly, don't even know how that happened, man. I just <clears throat> us post songs, uh, us send it to some people that would like messages or emails and be like, "Yo, let me get that." Uh, us putting it in the DJ's hands. It actually happened by us just giving it to the DJs, and since a lot of the DJs on Serato and MP3, it's easy for the song to spread around. So I just yeah. think that it was kind of like a snowball effect of people liking it and wanting it and. Since it's digital, people will be able to get it a lot easier than a record. So uh, I think that <clears throat> technology has definitely helped us, but it was more of a DJ situation than the internet. And, you know, blog writers get a hold of it, and the next thing you know, it's on a blog, and someone's telling us we're on this, and someone's telling us we're on that. Everybody's a lot more like internet savvy now, so people are finding it easier to just go out and look for new stuff instead of like three years ago, like you were saying you'd have to be presented with it off radio or TV or somebody to have to bring it to you. But now you could just go and look for yourself on, like, everybody's got a blog. So blogs are always looking for new shit out. And people are just, like, scouring the net late night hours and shit, just looking for new stuff to hear. So thankfully, people have been digging it off of a lot of the blog stuff, a lot of Internet stuff. It's, it's a real good look. I mean, speaking of real good looks, man, you guys are really known for your fashion. You know what I mean? Um, you want to talk a little bit about the the whole uh, streetwear culture and, and how streetwear has embraced you, embraced you guys? Um, I was just telling <clears throat> Maya backstage that uh, I just dress by not putting wax stuff in my luggage, and that way I can't go wrong. And it's not like streetwear and all of that. I kind of just got, I just kind of got hip to it. Like, I just knew what I liked wearing, and I would see it in stores. But the whole, like, knowing that it's a culture, kind of like how hip-hop's a culture, and it kind of branched out from the skateboarders and all of that. I mean, it's cool, and I'm glad they dig us. Like, but <clears throat> I really wasn't, I really wasn't into names. I just like the colors and whatever, how, what was on a t-shirt. And in streetwear, they don't have names. They don't put their names on the clothes. And that's kind of why I got into it, because I don't like wearing names. So when I saw, like, pictures or just, like, artwork or collaborations between artists and other artists and a T-shirt line was doing that, I found it, like, very creative. So it's easy. It's an easy thing to support because it's, it's kind of art. It's very artistic instead of, like, dollar value. So, but we're into, like coming up on stuff like finding old shit we used to wear and stuff like that that's kind of that's kind of our style like <clears throat> he uh he definitely does the he has his own little look and i kind of do my own thing too so we 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 kind of not in it's no competition of of what we find because we're two different sizes too but but i mean dressing up is i mean dressing yourself is is an activity it's like uh it's like your conversation piece without saying anything. So Yeah, like it's basically just it's just us putting on shit we like. That's <laughs> all. I'm not I'm like he was saying, I'm not really big into names and I don't really care about who made it as long as it looks dope to me, I'll put it on. I don't really care about if it's the end label or not. Like nobody gives a fuck about that stuff. And <laughs> thankfully, 
it's come to a point where, like he was saying, like streetwear labels don't really put their name on everything like other lines do. And you got to wear like a dude's name on your chest and all of that. That's kind of gay. So I didn't really dig it. And anybody who's just got dope artwork and dope designs on there and then you got to look at the tag to see who made it. I think that's cool. So I would definitely I would definitely rock that shit any day. So, all right. So let's talk about the sound. You guys got a unique sound and style to your music. Um, definitely a heavy bass sounding, you know, beat machine, kind of an '80s influence. You want to talk a little bit more about the sound? Um. Well, it's kind of something that I started to experiment when I met him. Uh, I didn't. It took me a while to get comfortable in where I was at. Like production wise, everybody always you get influences and then you try to just make it up to wherever that. So you I heard all the producers I was, you know, kinda emulating, like the the Timberlands and the Neptunes and uh Jay Dilla, stuff like that. And then <clears throat> a lot of people just gravitate gravitate towards their sound and then one day I just woke up and then took all of the stuff I figured out and I just was just like I'm gonna do it my own way. So you can just tell, no one can say, well, we sound like this. You can say that we're influenced by it, but there's no art that you can ever see that you can't tell its influences because there's nothing new under the sun. I can't say I created it. Like, I'm just doing what's comfortable to us. And I know that um, we didn't have to overcompensate our beats for our lack of rhymes because we can do that. So the strip down kind of gives makes people bob their head but give you opportunity to listen to you know the, the stuff we write and how we say it and uh i don't know it's just like i'm always progressing and trying to figure out new ways to do stuff or kind of put a stamp on what me and him are doing so that later down the line like some kids somewhere can figure out that they like the shit i do and then take what i do and do what they do off of it also so it's kind of like it's not a thought out thing it's just usually i'm just trying to make something i know he'll go off on because if he'll go off on it and if there's space then i'll i'll go off on it so it's kind of like try to beat him to the punch because he knows what he wants to hear and i'm not gonna force nothing or even suggest something that he ain't digging so it's kind of like it's kind of like you make it to turn it in to see if it's good so that's just what i go like and he don't want nothing he heard before or drums that he's heard before or a snare that so-and-so used on a hot song so I got to work harder to make drums that no one else has because that's what we're on right now. You want to talk about sound a little bit? Yeah, like as far as as far as like our sound goes, it's just it's just a combination of both of our influences. Like writing wise, people who've influenced my writing and stuff, uh, producers that influenced him. It's just basically a combination of all our influences put into a pot per se with our own spin on it that's all it is it's, it's real simple it's not no math problem complicated he gotta pray three times before he makes a beat and i gotta smoke a gang of weed or some shit it's not that complicated it's just sit down and do it plus we give ourselves kind of like the open-ended to to change because where everybody thinks we're at right now we're already we're already third album thought you know what i mean so uh, we, we're just, we'll never be like, oh, well, we're, we're done. We have nothing else to do. Cause I don't, I don't do shit else but this anyway. So if I don't do this anymore, I'm useless. So I'll just sit around and play video games or watch TV. So we kind of always got to come up with something new to try to accomplish. And it's never hard and we don't even have to have a discussion about it. It just ends up happening. It's just that. <clears throat> The focus on what we've put out and what people have gotten all year has just been, everybody's just waiting to take that. And as soon as you take that, like, don't even get comfortable with that because the other stuff's coming, like, three, four months right after it. It's going to be a constant parade of our shit, but yeah. it's not going to be oversaturated because the sound's not going to be the same. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, shoot, you guys probably have one of the most highly anticipated albums in our scene right now. You want to talk about what we can expect on the album? Um, we kind of been touring, like on our tour, we kind of do the whole album, and people don't even know it, but you haven't heard it 
like in your speakers, so it's not the same thing. But yeah, you haven't like sat down and rolled with it in your car and played it before you got in the shower and shit like that. So it's a whole different aesthetic. Like doing a show and hearing a song is a lot different from riding with your boy and hearing that same song. You know what I mean? Like you're definitely more focused on having fun while you're at a show and it's live and shit. But when you're riding around with it in the car, then you're definitely yeah, listening yeah, more with more detail and all that. So, so like maybe it's kind of like maybe one or two songs that we don't do that's going on there. Um, it's basically just what you know of us right now, like all into a pot, like basically hip hop wise, taking it beyond where the shittiness has it at right now. Like I'm not making no specific claims to anything, but a lot of it's crap. A lot of it's good, but it's good of one thing and not good of the other. Like, you got a dope-ass beat, but the rapper on it sucks balls. Or you got, like, the best lyricist in the world who doesn't know how to pick a beat to save his life. Or it's both are bad. You just can't get both are good. So what we're doing is just trying to make sure that I don't want you to be like, ah, I don't like that song, I want to come back to it later. Like, you can't help but listen to everything. So... That's basically how we're going to go about it. That's what's up. So if people want to know more about Cool Kids and stay in touch and know what's up with you guys in the future, how can they do that? Uh, you can do the MySpace page thing, uh, myspace.com slash gocoolkids. Or uh, you can read magazines or Google us. I tell people to do that all the time. You got an issue, just yeah. Google me. I feel good I'll be that there. I can say that nowadays. <laughs> I, can, I can honestly say Google me now, so... <laughs> Just do it yeah, by uh, it most in. recent and Google the cool kids and then you'll know what's happening next. That's actually the coolest thing you could ever say to anybody. Oh, uh, who are you? Google me. <laughs> That's funny. Wajid said the same thing. We had him. He's like, you don't know why I'm Google me. So, okay. So speaking of Googling yourselves, man, like what's the craziest? Because you guys are on the blogs and all over the internet. What's the probably the craziest thing you've seen uh, about your, you guess, yourself? I, I say probably I just, like no, this. No, 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 no. What were you going to say? I was going to say something about, like, I've seen all kind of, like, we're saving hip-hop and crazy, like, outlandish shit like that. I mean, no. we ain't saving that. It, it ain't dead. It ain't dying. It ain't dead. It'll be fine. Yesterday, we ain't no Superman or anything like that. I'm on the Complex website because I check it and I scroll down to the bottom and whose face do I see but mine. And it's like, it says the title Hopsters, which I'm not as mad at as Hipster Hop. Hipster Hop is whack. Hopsters, I don't know. No one said it yet, so I don't know how whack it is. Until like... It sounds... Yeah. <laughs> hopsters, it's just like they're trying to say that we're hipsters, but not hipsters. We're like rap hipsters, which I don't agree with because I'm not a hipster. I just... I dress cool, so what? Anybody who says that they're a hipster is the gayest individual on earth. Like, if you go in the mirror and be like, man, I'm a hipster. I am a hipster. You feel good about that shit, and you go tell your friends, I'm a hipster, man. You should kill yourself. That shit's whack, but... Yeah, like the whole parade of, That's like, a real term, yeah. really, really small ankle jeans and Ray-Bans. Like, we, he was doing the small ankle jeans. I did the Ray-Bans back in the beginning of the year. Then I saw the Olsen twins with Ray-Bans, so I kind of put them away. Then I put them back on, and then yesterday I'm, like, going through the internet, and I see, like, one of the dudes from Laguna Beach with Ray-Bans on, so I officially have retired. <laughs> so it's like, I wear it's shit until other people get... out who can kill shit. There's, there's, like, a list of people, when they do something, that means it's over. It's, it's a nice list of them, and I ain't gonna call it out right now. If but it gets the Hollywood period, it's a wrap. Yeah. Hollywood can't dictate anything that's cool. If it's on extra, yeah, <laughs> it's dead. It's on extra or the View or, or motherfucking. Um, if P Diddy wears it, it's over with. Nick Cannon. Any. Yeah, we've been doing a Nick Cannon promotion. <laughs> <laughs> like he's probably a really cool dude, and one of our guys works for him, so we don't wanna. We don't want to step on anyone's toes, but when he put a gold rope on, I definitely had to take mine off. <laughs> no, I'm not going to. I am going to say that. What? If Terrence from 106 and Park starts doing it, then it's, it's done. We might be on there one day, and <laughs> I hope, gonna be really I hope bad. you don't need mug or anything, but. 
So actually, no, nah, that's a good. That's good though, because Chicago has kind of that whole, a whole new sound coming out of there. I mean, like when Kanye came out, he had whole sound, but now there's a whole new sound with Cool Kids, and then you know, like with with uh, Kid Sister and all that. You know what I mean? You want to talk about that whole? I, I guess they're calling it uh, like kind of a club hip hop type thing. I don't know what the title is, but yeah, we want to talk club rap. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't get it twisted. She she definitely has that in the bag. That's her thing. Uh, we just, all our shows were in clubs, so we had to make people dance because don't nobody want to come to a club and stand around. And if you listen to our songs, they're, they're actual, they're real fucking, like, oh, yeah. songs our, with, our, like, listen to the to the shit. lyrics. Yeah, some, yeah, yeah. It averages some out, going on. <laughs> it averages out at, like, the chronic, like, BPM. Like, it ain't, it don't even, we got one fast-paced and song. And I don't even think we ever used the word, we never wait, maybe it. once, we said dance maybe once in a song. And I, I think that's the only time we said dance. Yeah. So we like it when girls dance to it, but we ain't trying to make you dance. We want to make you put your seat back. You ain't got to dance, man. Yeah, but I mean, she she's killing it on, on that side. Like, there hasn't been too much, like, club rapping since, like, freestyle music. Yeah. So it's kind of like new freestyle music. And, uh, I mean, it's just different. Chicago, we just... All the alternatives come out of Chicago, like Kanye, Common, Lupe, us. Like, none of the traditional hip hop comes out of there and really works. Like, the only one that's doing it is Twista, and it works. He like hits or miss sometimes, but like the focus isn't on that. Like with Kanye being like the biggest fucking star in the world, like it takes. Like it's he's so beyond he's so beyond his city now. Like no one even mentions that he's from yeah, yeah. Chicago anymore. And then I think Lupe is going the same route. And then Common, like the movie, the whole just everything alternative. I wouldn't say alternative like 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 alternative rock, but just your different style of hip hop, your little branch off. I don't know how it comes out of here. I really don't know what the deal is, but it just keeps on coming out of there. We got it all. So, and, and then, uh, God willing, summertime, like right when everybody get out of school and you about to go on vacation, you can go to the store before you get on a plane, pick something up from us. Because the first album is not an album; it's an EP. It's like it's like it's like the it's like the microwave version. Because we haven't really like I'm gonna be perfectly honest, we haven't really worked hard on shit. <laughs> so, when it's time for us to work hard, I'm I'm actually scared for what's gonna happen. So, yes, I'm keeping it real. Uh, everybody says it. What the fuck is real? Well, what does it mean to keep it real then? No, I've never kept it real. I've just been me. I don't know what keep it real. What's not real? What's how can you keep it fake? How do you? I think it's weird when like, oh man, I'm keeping it real. You, you gotta do specific <laughs> things to keep it real. If you do anything other than that, you ain't keeping it real. <laughs> but I think I think if you have to say that you're keeping it real, then you got an issue with keeping it real. Cause Chappelle shows you when keeping it real goes wrong, and it does go wrong. Yeah, you can't keep it too real. Can't you keep it too real. To end up in jail. Yeah, so, you keep it real all the time. Somebody will shoot you. You don't want to get shot for keeping it real. Cause you don't want your headstone to say he kept it real. Straight up, man. Keeping it real will get you killed or put in jail. <laughs> Too real. Yeah. Too real, that is. You can keep it real to an extent. I'm gonna keep it pseudo. I'm gonna keep it half real, half fake. I'm gonna keep it tofu. But keeping it real is safer <laughs> than keeping it gangster. Sure. Keeping it gangster, gangster definitely just, gets you yeah, shot yeah. or, or put in jail, yo. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I guess do you. Do you. Do you? Be yourself. That always works too, so. Read a book. Motherfucker. Read, read a book. <laughs> 